in the Hendersonville area since 2010, and the other publications that I saw maybe featured person of color twice in the 10 years. And so I really wanted to make sure that the first year, every single cover had a person of color. Um, and I have a story to tell. I have a neighbor who, after my second issue, and these are in order of uh, when they published. Um, the first two covers featured two black, well, two black women. One, many people know Karis Roberts um, is uh, very well known here in uh, Asheville. She's also a model, but she works with the Viewers Association as well. And then um, Arlene Dwayne Hemingway, which uh, is a woman who's 83 years old. She writes 100 word drabbled. And these are stories that are told completely in 100 words exactly. Um, but I had a neighbor who, after just those first two issues, told me the magazine was too black. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I featured people all, of all races. Um, and she actually questioned whether I would ever buy a magazine that didn't have a black person on the cover. And I thought, why would anybody say something like that? <laughs> Magazines are meant to convey information, to share stories, to tell people what's going on. And why would you not pick up a magazine or decide to buy it simply because of the color of the person's skin on the cover? So I wanted to, my first year, I was determined, okay, every issue's gonna have a black person on the cover. Very first year. <laughs> and then after that, uh, I did a bonus issue in November of 2020 one, which was kind of a, um, a magazine. It was supposed to be basically a Christmas marketplace, and it ended up being a 40-page magazine. <laughs> um, but it was basically motivational stories, how to um, get ready for the, the next year. But after that, um, I wanted the covers to be as inclusive as possible. Um, Kristen Munoz is a, a female glassblower. She's one of very few female glassblowers. She's based in uh, Marshall, North Carolina. Um, the July 2022 issue, a 14-year-old boy who started his own business, um, a chill cereal bar. Um, I actually went all the way to Lubbock, Texas to photograph the woman on the October uh, 22 cover. She is a chef with her own business and um, wanted to make sure that people all over the country are covered, so I actually went and photographed her for the cover and featured her. Um, Lexi Wilkins, who um, started a um, rehabilitation Center for People with Substance Abuse Issues um, is covered. Um, Black Men Monday is a local group that helps with community advocacy, getting people involved in going, especially parents, going to their schools and actually um, going to school board meetings and getting involved in the communities, getting people out to vote. Um, how many of you have shopped at Mountain Merch downtown Asheville? This is Mariko Walker. She's the owner of that, so I wanted to make sure that, um, Someone of Asian um, descent was also featured as well. And then this current issue is um, all about artificial intelligence. With AI everywhere, you hear it in all the news, everything. I wanted to have a magazine that actually talked about it and educated people because I was reading how people are afraid to use it. Some people are gung-ho about it, but nobody's really understanding what are gonna be the ramifications of it. So I was very lucky to be in contact with Ben O'Connor, who um, generously wrote a great article about how to use um, chat GPT and some of the different ways you can utilize it. Um, and I have other articles and writers in there who are basically helping to educate us, to let us know how are we going to use this? What are the different ways we can use it? And um, outside, there are different articles are different issues that you can actually see. But I did have some sample copies of the current issue. This is a digital magazine, but because I knew I was gonna be here, I did have some sample copies printed. This is not the final version of the magazine, so um, I do have a few copies I can show people, but please do not keep them, I need them for marketing. <laughs> um, but you will find, there are a few typos, it wasn't fully proofread, but I wanted to show you guys the quality of this magazine. This is a beautiful magazine, and because I'm also a portrait photographer, which I'll get into as well, um, I wanted a magazine that not only featured beautiful photography um, of the people being featured, but also be beautiful that when you're reading it, it's going to be something that you're going to be proud to read, that you're going to want to read over and over again. This is what I call 
Um, this is a magazine that is not a throwaway magazine. I have writers who are college professors, who are college deans, who are business professionals and subject matter experts from all over the country. And they're writing educational articles, informational articles um, that will really help you um, enhance your life no matter what stage of life you're in. If you're in business, if you are starting a business, if you just need help and wellness tips, um, art and culture tips, career tips, there are articles in here that will help you. You may read an article and think, oh, I don't really need this right now, but at some point, you may think, oh, hey, I read an article when Envoy boy died. Maybe I can go back to that and read it. So these are magazines that hopefully you will keep around and use as a reference, as a guide um, for this. So um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of why, because people always ask me, how did I come up with the name The Envoy Guide? Well, during 2020, um, when we're all in COVID lockdown, my husband and I were, walk, uh, were watching a lot of Netflix, and there was a show called Altered Carbon. Has anybody ever heard of it? <laughs> really good show. Um, and the main character in it was often referred to as the last envoy. Um, and for some reason, envoy always stuck with me. And it actually means messenger or representative. And as I was coming up with the concept of this magazine, after seeing so many small businesses, women-owned businesses, black-owned businesses, minority businesses during COVID going out of business because they could not adapt to the new norm and to what was happening, I wanted to create a magazine that would be a resource guide for them, but also be a representative of who they were, a representative to tell their stories and get their experiences out there, but also to share their knowledge. I want to be able to have something that can be passed on. So getting back to the show, um, in the show, people are implanted with a device called a stack, and the stack houses your personality, your memories, your basically your entire essence. And as long as that stack is never destroyed, you can actually move, transplant that stack into a different body or what they call a sleeve. Well, for some reason that sticks with me in terms of the magazine because the, the magazine itself is not only the stack, it is the information, it is storing that information of the people I'm featuring, of the writers, is their knowledge, their wisdom, their culture, um, and you can pass it on because it's also the body, it's the sleeve. It is something that you can pass on to the next generation of people so that the knowledge is never destroyed, basically, unless this magazine is destroyed. So that's my corny way of describing who the name came about. Um, so as they're going through this current issue, I wanted you to see there are all different types of articles, uh, health and wellness articles, uh, relationship articles, um, like I said, AI, technology, um, business and career, um, arts and culture, empowering your life. So there are different articles to really help you, um, like I said, learn how to enhance your life or solve a problem. Every person who is featured um, fills out an online questionnaire and everybody's asked the same questions. And then once I get the responses, then I can generate uh, additional follow-up questions. But one of the questions that everyone is asked is what are the challenges you are facing in your business, either as a woman, as a minority entrepreneur, or in general? And then what are the solutions that you're using to get over those challenges? How did COVID affect you as well? Um, and how did you adapt to that? because they want people to be able to share their knowledge and their experience so that the next person reading that article, if they're going through the same challenges, they can at least get a different perspective of, hey, there's something I didn't think of before. Maybe I can try that in trying to tackle this problem as well. So I'm gonna go back to my cards here because I'm going all over the place. Um, let's see. There's also in each issue, um, feature stories. So this one happens to be a sponsored feature that Mountain BizWorks um, has uh, sponsored where um, they actually not only advertise, but they are able to submit a feature of one of their clients. Um, and it's a way to not only um, tell the story of what they're doing to help their clients, but it gives their clients exposure as well. 
and um, they have different sponsorship opportunities for people to do that. They can even write articles um, for to, to educate people as well um, and basically share their stories um, for everyone to, to read about. In each issue, there is also a directory listing because I, everyone who is featured, um, who writes, who is an advertiser, um, gets a directory listing in the back of the magazine. Because I want this to also be a kind of like a yellow pages. So if you're looking for people to support in your community or across the US, you can go to the back of the magazine and look under whatever category you need. So if you need an accountant or a business consultant, you can go back there and say, hey, Beverly Jarenko with Inside, um, Inside Edge Consulting. Um, you can find her contact information back there and reach her. Um, but you can find all types of information in there. The features that I, um, and each one has a link because everything that I do for this magazine is to give exposure to the people who are inside this magazine. So there, if you're featured, if you're an advertiser, um, if you're a writer, your information is in here with a link to your webpage. I want people to get back to you so that we, this is a reciprocal relationship. It's mutually beneficial. I want people to support you and I want them to support me as well. Um, but at least this gets you out there as well and is a benefit for you. Uh, let's see here. Um, like I said, um, this magazine is a digital magazine. I would love to print. When I first started, my husband and I, we printed a thousand copies. That was all we could afford of um, each magazine up until October of 2022. Um, and then basically, prices just skyrocketed. It's too expensive to print. These sample copies that I printed, $30 per issue. So I'm hoping um, with enough advertising, sponsorship support, subscriber support, that I can continue printing. This magazine, to me, deserves to be in print because a lot of people, like I said, you want to curl up in a magazine or a book on a rainy day. Um, and even if you want to put it on your um, iPad, it is always available via digital subscription. When I did um, offer print subscriptions, the digital subscription was included. You got that as a bonus. So you could take it wherever you went and always have it and download it. So I want to make sure that this magazine stays in print as much as possible, even if I just print it for myself. <laughs> um, and let's see, any other questions? Oh, we'll get to, um, we can go to the About Me page. So a little bit about me. I am um, from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, graduated from Bennett College, back from Lonnie, um, in interdisciplinary studies, which is basically communications. I have worked in um, communications for nonprofits as director of communications for the American Lung Association of Texas, um, Davis Electric um, Cooperative, and um, the Arizona Newspaper Association. So desktop publishing, Communications is basically in my blood. It's what I grew up with. One cool fact that people don't know. Um, my mom was a huge Star Trek fan. My middle name is Nichelle, because I was yes! born in Texas. <laughs> <Michelle Nichols. laughs> so I thought it was always fitting that I went into communications after being named after Star Trek's communications officer. <laughs> and uh, basically, always love doing desktop publishing, even um, also, I'm a portrait photographer. I'm a great angle photography. I do everything but weddings. So if you need product photography, headshots, anything like that, I would love to talk with you as well, too. But that's also one of the reasons why this magazine, I think, is so beautiful. Because as much as possible, especially if you're local, I come for the features. I will do the photography for your feature absolutely free. The only thing I ask is if you want to use the images outside of the magazine, you just pay for the images. So I want to make sure that this magazine not only provides me with beautiful images, but also provides the people who I'm featuring images because a lot of entrepreneurs when they're first starting out, they don't have images. They're using cell phone images. And I try to tell them, please do not send me a cell phone image because number one, I'm stretching them to fit the page. And if they send me a cell phone image, they're gonna be pixelated, they're gonna be blurry. And quite frankly, a lot of them are crap. <laughs> um, because people think that, oh, I'll just take a selfie and it looks fine. That is not a true and 
good rep representation of who you are, of who your business is, of what you want to put out there to people. So please, I, I do tell people, do not use cell phone images for your business because you want people to know that you are a legitimate business and that you have products that are worth purchasing and supporting. Um, also, as a photographer, I have won 19 image competition awards. Um, recently, in July of 2023, I got an honorable mention in the Paris uh, Prix de la Photography honorable mention for a photo that I did for them as well, too. So, um, resources um, that I'm looking for that I need to me to use this. Check out. All right. Um, if you guys know of an affordable printer, I, like I said, I would love to print um, and continue printing. So I have for the um, two issues in March and July of 2023, I did use a local printer. They did a beautiful job, but they're just too expensive. When I first started, I was using a printer out of Illinois, and they were a fraction of the cost here, but their prices also went up. Right after, right after COVID, and they actually became so understaffed, I needed to have a three month lead time. I had to send my magazine to them three months before I actually published because they could not get a thousand copies to me on time, and they were still always late. So, um, any recommendations for printers would be appreciated. Um, any referrals, any introductions to people. Um, I'm always looking, I need somebody to sell ads for me. Um, I need um, help with social media, with distribution. I am a one-person publisher. <laughs> I do the, the layout, the sales, the ad designs, um, photography. I do all of this. My husband, George, he helped me by being my Sherpa, my driver, um, <laughs> helping to um, come up with ideas and things like that. But basically, all the work that I on this magazine is done by me. Um, I am very grateful that I have some volunteer writers who have generously donated their time to write for this magazine free of charge. I would love to be able to pay them because I think their, their content, their expertise is worth something. Um, features uh, subjects and writers. So I'm always looking for more people to feature, especially all over the country. So if you know <coughs> other artists, if you know of other um, entrepreneurs, business owners, community members and advocates, I would love to feature them. They can just go to my website, uh, theonvoy.com, and there's a Get Featured link, and they can just fill out the appropriate form. I do now charge $50 for people to get featured, because unfortunately there are people I have featured who, um, once I, they got featured, they disappeared. <laughs> um, they wouldn't even subscribe. Subscriptions are only $19 a year. And I'm like, and I've had people who said they couldn't subscribe because they didn't have the money. I'm like, if you're um, a business owner and you can't afford $20, you're doing a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> suggestions also, uh, any suggestions on how to grow the subscriber base? I have subscribers in all uh, 17 states. My website gets visitors from all 50 states and even um, over uh, two dozen countries. Um, so, but I would love to grow my subscriber base. It is extremely small. So, um, I have more people who have subscribed to my free newsletter than actual paid um, magazine subscriptions. And like I said, three subscriptions for the whole year is only $19. Um, also, um, like I said, referrals to get people to subscribe. Um, and if anybody's interested in print copies, um, like I said, I can start asking people to pre-order and if I know a certain number of people want print copies, then I can order a bulk amount and hopefully get the price down. Because right now, with this cost of this, I would have to charge $50 just to um, send out one copy because when I was printing, I was spending thousands of dollars myself just on the postage cost mm -hmm. alone. So um, any referrals for that would be great. Um, and before I wrap up, I would love um, your feedback. If you wouldn't mind just scanning this QR code, and this will take you to just a very brief survey to give me some feedback on how I did today. And then everyone who completes this code will get 20% off of the $19 annual subscription. <laughs> <laughs>
So just enter uh, Envoy when you get that, and then um, I would really appreciate it. It will help me because public speaking is nerve-wracking for me, <laughs> and I want to make sure that as I continue doing this, that I can provide valuable information and hopefully be engaging for people as well. Oh, sorry. All right. Everybody get it? <coughs> All right. And then finally, this is my contact information. Uh, I'm on email with uh, info at theonvoyguide.com or info at redanglephotography.com. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, uh, Instagram at The Envoy Guide or Red Angle Photography and LinkedIn, The Envoy Guide Magazine. LinkedIn actually threw me off of their platform because when I first created my magazine, I had it under my name and apparently they wanted to have a company name. So I'm like, this is for business referrals. Why do I have to have it under my company name? So they actually blocked my original Envoy Guide account and I had to create a whole new one that says The Envoy Guide Magazine. Um, and then also you bet for a minute, 327B28342. So um, thank you for your time. I really appreciate you guys coming out here. I hope you guys, if you um, read the magazine, and there are several copies outside of previous issues as well. And then, like I said, I do have some copies of uh, the current issue. It is not the final issue. There are typos in here. This was like 90% completed, but I wanted to make sure you guys could see it. Um, and I, I love this color. This was an AI-generated cover because I wanted something to show what the possibilities of AI are. Um, but please, if you do look at the current magazine, please just return that to me so I can use it for marketing um, as well. So thank you. Any questions? <laughs>
So a lot of us uh, people, not me, but we have kids. Um, so you need other information to help you it's with work-life balance. How do you deal with this stuff and get it all in one place? So there's not really any other magazine that I have found that includes not only the informational articles and the exposure with the spotlights and everything. There's not really anything that has it all in one place. So that's why it's been kind of tough for me to try to figure out who are the, the real people. Because if I, when I was just a business magazine, then other businesses would say, well, I really want my products out there to everybody, not just business owners. Um, so right now, it's really just trying to target uh, probably people who are more educated, who are more open-minded in terms of wanting to see diversity in a magazine and not really um, care that they're going to see more people of color, more um, minorities, but want to learn about the world and how we are all connected rather than have all of our differences. That's beautiful. Yeah, just one thought on that. Um, because you know, there's that old marketing adage: if you're marketing to everyone, you're marketing to no one. Yeah. You know, so that's the challenge. And I love the like one-stop shop. You know, all the things, health, fitness. You know, all that for the whole person. I'm just looking for that core organizing principle that's yes. like bringing people in as like an attractor field. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Hi. This is beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. So much admiration Thank for you. like all of the details um, and the effort I can see behind it. I just wanted to throw a quick word on top of what she was saying. And, um, I guess this is less of a question, <laughs> but more of just like an idea. Um, we do branding for brand strategy and marketing for people. And uh, one way that we go about helping our clients think about, okay, what is it specifically who exactly is my demographic. You can think, uh, we often think in demographic ways, but you can also think in psychographic ways. So that means what are these people interested in? Um, and I'd say there's two principles that I really like. Um, I just made to think about. Um, the first one is, um, I think with a magazine, not only are people giving money, which is their form of value, giving value, um, but they're also giving time. And so, because it is something that requires time to be given, um, they're giving more, you know, just to participate in the product that you have. And so, they have to be getting equal, equal or more value back from that magazine for it to be worth it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's one principle. So, how can you give value? And then another uh, thought might be, what problem am I solving for the reader? Um, and then really emphasizing that problem in you know, the front cover and the little subtext, um, what problem are you helping this? Yeah. Um, that just might be a, a question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one of the things that I've always had in my mind as, this, as I've been going through the magazine is trying to expand into doing, because um, I thought about doing podcasts. Because, uh, and one of the things I'm planning on doing is adding more video where I actually interview the people I'm featuring, even if they're just short interviews, and posting that and getting more exposure online for them, and helping them tell their story to a wider audience online, and hopefully get some engagement that goes back to their website as well. Um, doing Facebook Lives, um, doing little snippets, but like I said, every magazine um, does have a link to their website. I give uh, writers a discount on advertising, uh, one writer, her business was not doing very well, so I said, I'll run a free ad for you. Put it online, too. Because I, I don't want to just have people give to me and I'm not giving back. Because uh, it's not for me, it's not always about the money. If I can help a business that's really suffering and going through a rough patch get through that, then that's my goal. Hopefully, I answered your question. Yeah, no, I was just kind of reflecting. Well, thank you. I have so much admiration for all of this. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, see, I see so much potential for it. Thank you. And then I have a question. Have you considered oh, doing Substack or something like that? I have looked at it because I actually have a subscription to it. Um, and I read several um, of the articles on there. So it's just a matter, for me, it's a matter of time because it's just trying to get everything done. Um, I just had my website moved to WordPress, which I hate. 
eight. Uh, <laughs> it is a huge learning curve and just um, having to do that, because I actually had to finish this magazine while I was getting over COVID and learning how to navigate WordPress. Um, so uh, I would love to look at other ways to get it out there, because I know with Substack you can do like donations and then paid um, subscriptions as well. Um, so that is something I am definitely looking at as well too. Steve. So you had mentioned that um, public speaking and this was nerve wracking for you. I think you can let that go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really great presentation. And it's a wonderful product. And your, your entrepreneurial nature is in your spirit and is very natural and genuine. Um, I'm very curious about, um, you know, I kind of look at benchmarks in my life, in my work, and I'm curious to know, uh, and the evolution of this, it moved from a business magazine to a magazine, a lifestyle type magazine. Um, did you see a change in your reception from um, subscriptions or just feedback that you're getting? Um, and I think about other benchmarks that you might be looking at as issue from issue, and how's it going? Is it is it clocking in the right direction? Just curious about how it's evolving for you. Yeah, it has probably gotten more traction now that I've added more articles, um, because like I said, people before when it was just business, they weren't seeing any value in it if they weren't already an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business. So now that I'm able to add more articles and include more people who are writing and getting um, access to their networks of contacts, then that has really helped. I always feel like I'm on the cusp, I'm on the cusp every time an issue comes out and then just waiting because at one point I was giving away free digital subscriptions to this um, while offering the print magazine and I still couldn't get people to purchase uh, or even to subscribe. I got a, a few people, the most subscribers um, that I have had has been just under 100. And so that's why I'm trying to get it to where it's worth the time for not only me, but the writers who are contributing to this. Yeah. Let's all subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> so the follow up, you were talking about your demographic and who you're going after, mm -hmm. and I think about this format, this media. Everybody from Sports Illustrated to National Geographic is struggling, right? Yeah. And how do you get in front of readers? Because this is a media where people sit down and they. So I think it's a very high bar and yeah. challenging, but um, that's something that I would think of. Where are readers and how can I at least get my brain in front of them so they can investigate it on their phone or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, and I have tried Facebook. Marketing, uh, paid ads, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, and either I don't know what I'm doing, which I know I don't, when it comes to setting all that up with the algorithms and everything, um, or people, I, it's just not getting out there. Because I've actually done paid ads in every major city, Atlanta, New York, uh, Chicago, Houston, Dallas, and I don't get any traction on uh, social media at all. So any help with that or suggestions? <laughs> And then uh, following in the um, theme of giving the reader value for the time they're investing, have you thought about, and it could potentially be easy to try, um, entertainment as a book, such as a um, topic appropriate or story from the crossword puzzle? Hey, I had thought um, about that. With something akin to Lecter's Best Medicine. Mm -hmm. So the person who put the mag magazine down will pick it up because the crossword puzzle is just that good. Hmm. I had not thought of that, so just, that's, that's something I'll have to think about. Yeah, thank you. Even I know, that shocks me too. It's right here, right in front of you. Right in front of you. There we go. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know the voice. You know, you know. You know where it's going to be. No, I just want to, um, for those of you who have not worked with her, um, me, her, 
Turner, Andy Lewis were all part of like the COVID cohort of business here in Nashville. <laughs> and um, you know, it's just great to see what you've done. Uh, I credit Yvette for me being where I'm at today. Uh, first headshot was professionally taken by her. So the way that you see Dallas Cardona, you see Yvette for me. Okay. Um, and then also in my first um, first two magazines I wrote in those as well. Um, so, you know, if you are looking to get your name or your brand out there, I think if you're a business owner, it is a fantastic way to start. Um, and then, you know, being reciprocal to that is not only, you know, doing it for yourself, but getting other people in as well uh, to, to contribute as writers or to contribute as headshots. And that's one way that we collectively as a community can help Yvette grow. Because she's been around for four years, y'all. Like, she is not new. She's been here. She's done a lot of stuff with the Chamber. Some of the people that she's featured are absolutely star stellar people. She's been doing some great things, so let's continue to help her out. She's helped me so, so much. And I love you. You know that. You already know Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, one of the things that I'm always looking for are writers, because one of the goals is to showcase women, um, all minorities, as subject matter experts, because you don't see those in regular mainstream magazines regularly. So I want writers who have various voices to contribute to this so that people can not only just read about the same people or hear from the same people, but hear different voices on different subjects as well, too. Um, so I have an idea. There are two um, formats that I think have been really successful. Vanity Fair, for a long time, did the Marcel Proust interview, and so have all kinds of celebrities and um, public figures answer, answer this um, questionnaire, um, which is really juicy reading, but it's also really great. Um, and then the other thing I think about is Humans of New York on Instagram was where it started. And that, for me, is a really addictive read because it's so phenomenal in taking any stranger on the street and pulling out their story, whether they're like seven years old or 95 years old, whether they're a former stripper, whether they're an artist, like incredible human stories. So I think people are um, so anxious to, or not anxious, but intrigued to read people's stories. I think if you created, it's a lot of work though. If you are the writer, you have to grow up. But if you had an interview, similar in style to like the Proust interview, where you have questions that are at the core of your mission that draw that out from the reader, but at the same time, help them to tell the juicy details of their highs and their lows. Um, that is almost like a form they could fill out. Well, that's what they do now online. The okay. questionnaire does have set questions that everybody's asked. Okay. Um, and I don't normally, the only time I edit it is just for grammar to make people sound better. <laughs> um, because I want them to tell their story in their own words. There were a few articles in the first two issues that I actually, um, the features were where I wrote it as an actual feature. Um, especially Arlene Dwayne Hemingway. I mean, she and I, we had an interview and I actually wrote a feature on her and it got to be where it was just too much time, time consuming to do that. And I thought I really want and I really want people to tell their story in their own words because she is such a witty person. I mean, just the way she talks and her humor. I want that to come out for people and not have me as an editor get in the way of that. So that's why I went to the Q and A format where people can tell their stories um, themselves. But Probably, I'm sure there are other questions, and that's why they fill out the questionnaire originally, and then I can come up with additional follow-up questions that go into more detail for them, um, and hopefully get their story out the way they want to be represented. But yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you. I can wait for a meeting. I'm sorry. I, that part. <laughs> I look forward to it. We've got room time for one more. Oh no, Corey's the last question. Uh, <laughs> here to ruin everybody's day. Um, so, my name is Kat. I'm very familiar with your industry. Uh, I have a photo studio. Um, for a year, I ran a news magazine in Nashville called The Asheville Current. We printed with the Iwana, uh, the same printers they use in Fayetteville. It cost me five grand to run. Um, and after about three issues, I stopped doing it. 
Uh, I went online because there's no way to make margins. You cannot run a magazine as an independent person. Magazines are things now that are bought by billionaires to sell the building. <laughs> because they don't want us doing the, sorry, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but the job of working with the people to create truth is one that's incredibly unprofitable. Yes. So if you look around and you, excuse me. My question is, would you consider pivoting to the needs of the small businesses that are your only customer? Um, and at what point would you consider scrapping the, uh, these magazine and really leaning into what makes you money, which is just essentially being a small business marketing company. Um, well, that's why I went digital. Um, yeah. Because the printing cost was just so astronomical. Um, and I deliberately keep my ad rates as low as possible. When I first started, a business card ad was $29. Now it's uh, 250 just so I can at least try to make some type of money to continue the marketing, the website, to do some type of um, sustainable business with this. Um, I am much lower in terms of advertising and sponsorships than every other magazine in this area. And it's so that I can appeal to those small business owners like myself who are just either just starting out or haven't gotten in the black yet because I have lost money on this magazine doing it because I'm trying to definitely cater to not only the smaller businesses but also give the larger businesses a niche market that they can go after because like I said, there's no other magazine at least here that is targeting minorities that's even featuring minorities and other um, people regularly. You won't see that on any of these other magazines. So I want to definitely keep small businesses in mind because I've had people tell me over the four years, you need to raise your prices, you need to raise your prices. I'm not going to charge $3,000 just for somebody to be on the cover. I'm only charging $50 just to get featured. And any business owner can spend $50 to get a feature. And my features rank from one page to six pages. So it's really dependent on what information they give me and if I have some really cool photos. <laughs> so, yeah. Really fun. 
Cybersecurity bingo. Huh. We're small business. <laughs> okay. Um, so on the eleventh, the Asheville Symphony Artist Res Residency kickoff is at the Rad Hotel. It's a free mixer, and it's going to be um, a really exciting time for the symphony as they're bringing in someone who is a world-renowned musician that is actually from Asheville. So they're kind of bringing him back for the summer with his wife. It's going to be amazing. Uh, on the 13th, we have the four-week kickoff of the Cardona Business Solutions Sales Seminar. Uh, lunch is provided. Alex wants to say something about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's good to be on this side. I've always been on, uh, you know, sitting on the stairs. Everything is great. Uh, but four-week sales seminar. Um, it's really simple. Uh, people think that sales is a sleazy thing, and it's not because it's about intention. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you for four weeks. I'm going to increase your sales so tremendously. Lunch is included by Chef Cheryl, so don't show up for me. Show up for Chef Cheryl. It's from 11 to 12.30. So literally, if you're already having your morning already scheduled here, just stick after. Um, of course, there's a uh, coupon code. So I would love to help you increase your sales. And um, yeah, I'm here to do that. So let's do it. Let's get some lunch. It's going to be exciting. If you see me ask questions, just imagine what I'm teaching you. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hatchwork St. Patty's Day Party. It's um, free, it's going to be a lot of fun. Come one, come all, and uh, wear green. It's, it'll be a good time, as it always is. There's a backpack player. Oh, yeah, that's been, like, the whole thing. I think men are like, yay, backpack player. And like women are like, oh gosh. <laughs> 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 that's that's dynamic on it, anyways. How much we win? Um, and then on the 21st, we have the Asheville. Venture Asheville Entrepreneurial Leadership Summit. Um, I was just reading about this yesterday with the Tulsa Remote Managing Director, and and I, I think this is going to be really interesting. Do you want to say anything about it, Jeffrey Kaplan? Uh, sure. So uh, we've got three keynotes, one from uh, Virginia Bowman, who sold a company, the Blue Bottle Coffee Company, and started a coffee shop in LA as a queer space, and a black queer space. So how she's taken her exit, and then a lot of great connectivity from the world country. Uh, the lunchtime keynote is with Lizzie Cozart McKenna from the Eshman Mayhek Venture Studio. Understand how the government, UNC, and Mayhek are coming together to create a venture studio to fight the opioid epidemic. And the last keynote of the day is with Tulsa's managing director of remote Tulsa, Justin Harlan, where a single philanthropist has created a foundation and then built a whole team that will give you $10,000 to move to Tulsa to start a job. Take your job with me out here. It's pretty hard to There's some panels throughout the day in different industries. That final keynote is going to facilitate our own digital nomad, Rick Kratt. And then the day ends back here with the wine and cheese kickoff for NC Biotech's life science ventures. It's also like our happy hour. So after all the other five will come back here for the fun happy hour. We still have some tickets. There's no tables, but tickets are available on our site, venturecash.com. Awesome. All the words. Good job. <laughs> um, Will Sampson has um, an event coming up. He's going to speak. Um. I do. Yes. And I didn't pay Jeff to, to prompt you thinking about changing the world. But if you've ever seen a really big problem and you thought, I'd love to do something about it, but I have no idea where to start, we have got your answer. Uh, so this Saturday and Sunday, we're doing something called the Big Idea Jam. And when I say we, it is Asheville Digital Nomads with gracious sponsorship from the Hatch Foundation. So on Saturday for an hour, we'll do leadership training. And then on Sunday for two hours, we'll train you how to work on a really big idea. So if you have four hours a month to work on something you care deeply about, come. And if you're not on the uh, Digital Nomads loop and you need more uh, event information, see me after. And remember that's What? Yeah, it's 
so I'm surprised. Like, yeah, it should be working. Okay, and last but not least, there should be one more thing on there. Oh, mention, also mention that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh on that. Yeah, no, there's a, a lunch and learn that we have scheduled. It is um, using AI for legal advice the right way in the future of law with AI. Um, we have Matching Rosa from Ask Law that will be presenting on that. And that is also on that Thursday. Tickets for $10, lunch buffet from Moe's. Uh, as always, we want to say thank you. Return you guys are just ba, ba, ba. okay. So if you have a mug, return it to the mug library. Today we have Cheryl setting up her lunch cart, the giddy chick with deliciousness. We have bowls, quiches, that sort of thing. So you can support small business while you have delicious lunch. Thank you for being here today. You guys are